Welcome to the Dogish Podcast. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to do that from now on. Uh, this is the podcast dedicated to dog parents on the topics, events, and personalities impacting their lives. My name is not Jason Arias. It is Sylvia West, also known as Dog Up in This Bitch, certified professional dog trainer, pet expert, and crazy dog mom. And as always, my wonderful co host is Jason Arias, and he is the founder of Forever USA, a photography experience for you and the furry loved one in your life. Today, we have have on a very exciting guest. She is my coworker, so no pressure, Jason. Okay. I don't feel pressure. Don't get nervous, but uh, it's Andrea Servadio, and she is the owner of Fit Dog Sports Club in Santa Monica. She's a crazy business lady. She actually won uh, October 2020 Women's Leadership and Business Award. She knows what she's talking about. So we're going to break down for her dog care, what to look for, and uh, what your dogs may or may not need, and all that There was some stuff that, that just totally blew me away on this. Like yes, was, this was this was yeah. Jason's mind blowing episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything from from puzzles to uh, like this this full on um, custom gym experience that she offers there at, at Fit Dog. So super excited to share this with everybody. All right, so let's jump in and let's uh, let's get her on. Okay, so Andrea, um, I want to get into you, uh, get into it with you. <laughs> um, I'm going to get into it with you. No, we're going to talk about uh, the differences between like what you do, because obviously you've run a very successful doggy daycare now in Los Angeles for 10 years. But what I want to hear, and I think what our listeners want to hear is how you went from investment baker in Wall Street to crazy dog mom to dog mom who runs a business dedicated to her dog. So talk to us about how fit dog started, why it started, and um, and and tell us about Brecken too. Yeah, so thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to be here. And I know Sylvia, she's one of our trainers. So um, of course, when she asked me, I definitely wanted to come on. Um, so have. yeah, we started uh, Fit Dog, yeah, <laughs> 10 years ago. And um, we lived in New York. And, you know, I was a banker. I had a cubicle. Well, actually, I had a nice office overlooked with Bryant Park. Um, but uh, just kind of in that space and just wasn't feeling it anymore. And came out to Los Angeles for a change of pace. And we brought along our dog, Brecken, who's a crazy Jack Russell Terrier. So if people don't know, their nickname is Jack Russell Terrace. And uh, they are, just have like tons of energy. They're really smart, mischievous. And they're not necessarily the easiest to train, per se, because, um, you know, they have a mind of their own. So, you know, Sylvia's met him and he's now 12 and you would not be able to tell that he's 12. He still has a ton of energy, has no idea that he has arthritis or any of the other things going on with him. He's still None. going at 100 percent. So, full, yeah, this dog is ripping up our floors. And yeah, he's so, he's so crazy um, and adorable. He's so cute. So we have him. And uh, the first thing we do is like we need him in daycare. He he needs to go do something you know we can't have him home all the time mm. he's gonna drive us crazy and right at the time back then you know doggy daycares were really fragmented there was no consistency from one place to the other and also huge disparities from city to cities where people were kind of in this new new service doggy daycare mm. so when we had him in daycare in new york we were you know used to having a certain level of care and experience but when we came here it was just totally different um, and we didn't love our options and so you know i just said i want to create something uh, for dogs like brecken i want to create a doggy daycare that you know offers more offers enrichment offers exercise just offers more for dogs like Brecken because um, what was here just wasn't good enough for our little dog. So when you say enrichment, like what are you what are you referring to in like so so this must have been something you were getting in New York and just couldn't find in Los Angeles. What kind of things in particular were those? Yeah, so Brecken, um, you know, in New York they had like a great like setup for them. They had a full day a schedule for them. So they would play, but then they had nap time, and then they had morning walk and then they would play again and they had snack time and you know they had their afternoon walk and it was just a really well-rounded balanced day um, where Bracken came home tired but you could tell he he was happy with you know everything that he had done and he wasn't like overly tired. LA at the time was just all about sticking all the dogs in one room. Um, there was this idea that you know dogs are pack animals so they just love being in a pack so we're just going to put them all in one room and they're going to be happy 
And they never left that room. They're there all day underneath black, like fluorescent lights. Um, and there was no breaks and no walks and nothing besides this room. And Brecken would come home tired, but he'd also come home sick. He got you know numerous eye infections and he just it just wasn't good. It wasn't good for him to mm. be always on um, for such a long period of time. And I thought there has to be a better way. And so, you know, I wanted to offer all those different things at Fit Dog. In addition to walks, you know, we wanted to offer, you know, other enrichment like puzzle playtime. We we used to have a treadmill. We don't have a treadmill now, um, but we had treadmill activities for them when we first opened. And then we ended up launching into, you know, hikes, um, beach excursions, you know, and now we do so much for them, but we can get into that later. But yeah, we just decided, you know, we, the dogs need more quality, not quantity. Yeah. And I have to say- Say, you know, as a trainer, when I first got started, a lot of my mentor trainers, and so like this was my mentality too, was like daycare and dog parks are a nightmare. You should never go there because in Los Angeles, it was that, you know, it's like, it's just 30 to a hundred dogs in a room all day, all day, no breaks. And like, they get cranky. They'd get fussy. Like if I was to me, I just imagine like if somebody put me in a mall for eight hours and like I didn't have any money to go shopping, that's probably how I would feel. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like just stuck surrounded by a ton of yeah. people and nothing to do. It's a lot of stimulation. People. It's a yeah. lot of stimulation. Yes. It's, it, and it can be too much for certain dogs and some dogs, it's not for them at all. And then we've also found that when we first opened is a lot of these working breeds, particularly herding dogs, daycare is not for them. Um, and owners don't like to hear that because I, mm. I feel like, you know, if, you know, owners are listening to this and they're saying like, you know, but I want daycare. I want someone to watch my dog for an extended mm. period of time. And daycare does offer that. Um, but you have to really understand, you know, the limits of what daycare is. Like we can provide a nice schedule um, and the dogs are cared for. Um, but there is a limit to the type of interaction dogs are getting when they're in daycare. And a dog like a herding dog, um, you know, they're going crazy. They want to control everything in the group group and they're really smart and they need to be working they need to be doing more sports activities you know like what we do at fit dog now silvio you know like scent works or agility they need to be really using their brains um Mm -hmm. and learning new tasks and uh, you know and daycare just doesn't offer that It's, it's great for social some sort types of socialization but it's not great for um, getting the mental stimulation and enrichment that the dogs need. So let's yeah. let's take a break. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. I love let's that. Let's take I've got a little a, break. I've got a I've got a question that I've been. I know, I can the last two or three feel minutes. you. I can feel you burning <laughs> over there, Jason. I can feel. <laughs> okay, we're gonna come back to Jason's question in just a second. Stay tuned. Allison is perfect. I mean, she'd never tell you that. She's humble and perfect. She likes everyone. She even likes her untidy roommate's weird guinea pig. Allison, wait, are you texting and driving? Allison, no, that's the exact opposite of what I was just saying about you. Why, Allison, why? Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn to spot a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. I'm Paul George. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. My name is Lola Silvestri, and I'm going to be 95 this year. I was very independent. I fell, and I had to have meals on wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. 
Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool. And by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me. But I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media. Listen live and explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. Okay, so so this is the question I've been I've been hearing you, Andrew, talk about like the, the the benefits of not just going to a regular doggy daycare. So what is like a like a, a typical day? Is there a typical day at, at Fit Dog? Like is there a typical day or is it something that's <laughs> custom to a particular dog or a particular breed? Like 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 explain to me. Like my mind is like racing trying to figure out what that looks like. <laughs> So yeah, it, it actually really depends on on the dog. There is a, Sylvia's laughing because she knows there's no typical day <laughs> at, at Fit Dog. Um, like I just came from there and I'm like, wow. Well, this was a Tuesday for sure. So the calendar says for sure. <laughs> So what we've, what I think is great about what we've built right now is that dog owners can customize their dog is doing during the day and they can make their schedule as lean as they want or as full as they want, depending on, you know, their dog. So some, uh, some dogs might be, they might be in daycare all day In some dogs, it's totally okay for them because they self-regulate, they take naps in the yard. They might go for an afternoon walk. They'll have their snack time at 11. So they'll come in, they'll play, they'll do snack, they'll get an afternoon walk and then they'll play with their friends and their, their doggy parents will pick them up and they'll be completely content with that. And then we have other dogs who do some sort of mix between daycare and our enrichment in sports classes. So some of them, like for instance, today is Tuesday. So they'll come in for pack etiquette, which is a training class that, you know, trains dogs to walk on leash in a group of other dogs. Um, and then in the afternoon, you know, they might, you know, go to daycare or some owners like piggyback classes. So sometimes they'll do a training class in the morning and then they might do a sports class like agility or scent works in the afternoon. Um, and then others, they may do like hikes in the morning and then come in the afternoon for daycare or again, piggyback in another class. So we have some really high energy dogs where owners can piggyback the classes and the dog is totally fine because, you know, they're just ready to go all the time and you know they just need maybe like an hour and a half nap and they're just ready um, and other times you know we might have a dog we're saying like you know what two hikes a week is really awesome and that's what your dog needs to feel fulfilled and that's their schedule so it really just depends on the dog and we we love sitting down with owners talking about who their dog is and what their dog needs and also what they need as a busy busy pet owner because some people work really long hours so putting that together for them is is part of what we do. So is it like, it sounds to me almost like, um, like one of those, like a, a nice gym membership where you go in and there's a menu of all these things and you're like, well, we've got Pilates on Tuesdays and Thursdays and you can go over and do yoga. And then you've got hot yoga and you've got jazzercise and racquetball and like, like there's all these different things. Right. And, and then there's somebody like, Oh, and you've got access to a personal trainer that's going to try and put together a meal uh -huh. plan for you and all that. Like, am I on the right track visually? Visualizing what this is like. Yes, yes, it is. A, it is. A, it is a sports club for dogs. Fit I dog feel like that's club. the most sports club accurate description I've ever heard of what you've created, Andrea. Like, I feel like that nails it right there. Well done, Jason. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> 
<laughs> and like, you know, I want to yeah, just I mean- <laughs> really quickly chime in, like, cause what I'm hearing from you and obviously like, I know you and I, I work for you now because I, I believe in what you believe in and what you've created. Um, but what, what would you say to the pet owner who doesn't understand the value of enrichment and variety in their dog's life? Like what would, how could you paint that picture for them of how important that is? You know, it's actually something that I have struggled with over the last 10 years is to really hone in why it's so important for enrichment. You know, people are like, my dog snuggles with me and he's fine and he's happy. And we had daycare owners that had been with us for eight years. And we always would say, you know, your dog, he has like heart hurting, you know, dog in him. He should really be doing other things. And um, a lot of times people, they see their dogs in a certain way and um, it's hard for them to understand like how much happier their dog will be. And so, you know, a lot of times when we finally get the person to convince them to do the hike, to do the beach excursion, to do the scent works, um, afterwards, the owner will come back and say, wow, my dog is a different dog. My dog was just like lifted out of what a depression that I didn't even know my dog was in. My dog is so happy and they become addicted to it and they become addicted to the way that their dog feels. So the only way I can tell people about it is to tell it through the stories of others. Because um, when you just say enrichment or mental stimulation, these words just kind of float around and People don't really know that why it's important and it's hard to explain unless you actually see the benefit. So for me, I just, I would say to anybody, try it, try it once, you know, just put your dog out there one time and give them this experience mm. and then you can see the difference and you will see a difference. You will see a happier, more well-adjusted dog and, um, and you'll be doing it again. And I, that's what I tell everybody. You will be doing it again. <laughs> So for the owner who doesn't have like fit dog sports club in their backyard, um, what, what do you, what do you recommend to them? Like, what should they be looking for? Like to, to spice up their dog's life? Like, do you think that open play daycare is good? Maybe once a week, like how did they, you know, for the guy who's like in Iowa where we are not, you know, how, how do they do this for their dog? What would you say? Or even like, yeah, in, that, in, that's you know, like, that's like, perfect. we, we have like, we have options here and, and I have a different perspective because uh, my dad actually used to own a doggy daycare here in town and he opened it because really some of the only other options when people would be going on vacation were vets where the, the mm. dogs would stay in a kennel, yeah. um, a very small kennel uh, for a week at a time. Mm. Um, and so, so it's, it's kind of interesting. Like I, like I hear all the benefits and, and all of those things. And I know a lot of the people that used to go to his daycare, like they raved and their dogs were happy and all that stuff. It's just not something that we have access to hear something like this per se um so yeah so like how would you supplement it or how like like where's the line it's it, i would assume something's better than just sitting at home alone all day if somebody works a 12-hour shift or something like that like like what are your thoughts on all of that yeah i know it's great it's a great question so i think daycare is probably better than being a home all alone all day for sure um mm-hmm. i've seen the impact of dogs that are being kenneled for six seven hours it's mm-hmm not good dog shouldn't be kenneled that long dog shouldn't be home alone that long like we've now all ex- experienced covid and we know what it's like to be stuck in our house for mm-hmm. decent periods of time and usually we're with we're being quarantined with somebody else and it's still boring and we can read and watch tv and play games on our phones and we are still bored imagine a dog like this is why they rip through your stuff you can't right. keep them home alone uh so daycare i feel like is definitely better than nothing and and depending on the daycare like it's been 10 years so there's a lot of daycares that offer other types of enrichment like ball pits um, like the puzzle play times, they offer additional walk, they offer the snack times, like, you know, things have evolved so much from 10 years ago. So a lot of daycares have these capabilities. And I would say, you know, splurge at least once a week on your dog and, and upgrade to, you know, to some of these additional activities that your daycare might offer. And then if you have a working breed, you know, part of it is one, trying to make the selection up front that works for your lifestyle too. You know, you have a dog that needs, you know, high intensity exercise exercise every day, but you work 10 hours a day This and, you know, there's nothing out there, then that becomes sort of an issue of, you know, is it a good match for you and your lifestyle? But I would mm. say, you know, if you have dog hikers in your area or dog walkers in your area, like tapping them, um, you know, will sometimes like before we did hikes, you know, hikers used to pick up dogs from daycare.
there from us, you know, and then take the dog out. So there are personal, you know, people that you can kind of tap to kind of supplement. But I would say a, a, a like a smart dog that needs a lot of exercise, daycare is good, like two, maybe three times a week. And then the other times it could be like a little bit more high intensity um, exercise for them. But there's ways to bridge it. And then of course, when they're home, you know, buying the puzzles, you know, buying, um, you know, Sylvia turned me on to the, the Zippy Paws burrows, for instance, you know, the dogs seem to love them. And they're so cute for humans too. they come like, you know, there's milk and cookies, and they have to grab the cookies out of it. There's just a lot of different things that are out there for dogs right now, or those scent like hiding scent pads, like uh, the digging pads, right, Sylvia, so you mm-hmm. hide treats in there. There's just a lot of things. And I think owners see them in the store and they might say like, ah, is that worth it? It is. It is worth it. it and and owners give up though. They'll see their dog's not getting the puzzle. Oh, my dog wasn't in that. No, he was. It just might take some time for him to understand it. And sometimes puzzles are hard and you have to keep working on it. And that's the whole benefit is that their mind is learning. They're learning something new and they're having this new experience. So, you know, right now I think we're on the fringe of like all these enrichment toys these enrichment activities are starting mm. to become more um, more popular, more normal. People are, we're bringing them into the light and I'm excited for that. I, I feel like now we're going to have a generation of dogs who are going to have much well-rounded, you know, schedules and lives okay. in the and cities. I, I don't want you know I don't I mean? to take I think the, world the, dogs the, are different. I don't want to take the question spotlight, but I have another question that I'm kind of dying. Like, like this is all totally new to me and my, like, I just want to know more about it because some of this stuff isn't things that we dig into with our dogs we spend a lot of time with our dogs our dogs go inside and outside all the time like there's a lot of interaction that way but we've never done um like puzzles we've never done anything like that that it's i guess challenging their mind so if we could take another quick break and then come back and i would like to know about some of those if you have some suggestions on some that i could go pick up that would be awesome there's no to bring me a baby brother we can do this together all right let's go Storks know how to keep kids safe. Do you? What? Oh my gosh, you don't know. <gasps> I know. You don't. <laughs> oh man, you laugh when you're uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Making sure your child is in the right car seat is one of the steps to safer travel. I will rock this. You will rock this. To know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool, very cool. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. It's, it's important, important to plan, plan ahead, ahead for emergencies, emergencies like, like the storm. storm. When, when it, it kicked, kicked in, in, we had we a were plan. Separated. We, we were, were able to get in touch with each other in no, no time. Idea how to find each other. The, the whole experience, experience was, was the most frightening 10 hours of my life. If, if there's, there's one piece of advice I'd offer other moms, moms out there, there, it's to stay it's calm and keep to the plan. Message. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. That'll be $73.11. Do you have a charity that I can donate up to? You just did. But I didn't select any option. It happened just by using your credit card. We recently changed our payment processing to Gratis Gives, who not only saves our company a ton of money on processing fees, but also donates a portion of every purchase to a participating local nonprofit. Why doesn't every business do that? If they switch to Gratis Gives like we did, they can. Achieve real social change by contacting Gratis Gives at 855-464-7284 or online at gratisgives.com. Most of my family, they never graduated high school, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. What if I told you that a tornado was going to happen tomorrow, right where you live? That it would touch down at exactly 3.17 p.m. and I told you the exact path it would take. You would, of course, prepare. 
you would talk with your loved ones and you'd make a plan today. It's true, I can't tell you a tornado will strike tomorrow, but shouldn't you have a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media, the future of broadcasting. Listen live at phoenixmedia.us. Okay, so we're back here with Andrew. We just got done learning about um, enrichment and some of the things that she does there at Fit Dog. What we can do um, if we don't have a fit dog near us? Because right now you guys are based just in Southern Cal, like Los Angeles area. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. We have our, we have one daycare and then we offer our outdoor excursions around Los Angeles. And before COVID, our classes were also around Los Angeles. Gotcha. Okay. So so we can start with like a standard daycare that uh, we love and trust locally um, and then try and expand that into maybe like hikes or other little excursions that we do with our dogs or with a dog walker that might offer in our area. But the other thing that that you've been bringing up are like puzzles. Like we were just, you you were mentioning different puzzles and how it's becoming more normal. But in in my brain, like that is, I got to be, I don't think that I've ever gone to uh, the the pet store and been like, okay, I need to find an awesome puzzle for the dogs. I'm looking for something that I think that they'll enjoy tearing up or pulling on or like, I mean, we've done some of the treat ones where they have to get the treat out of the inside. But I feel like maybe you're talking about something different or is it kind of like that it's kind of like that i mean there's all different types so you have the stuffable puzzles where you know you put the treats inside and maybe you know you freeze it you know put some peanut butter and you freeze it and it makes it a little bit harder for the dog to get to the treats so it keeps them occupied for a certain period of time and then you have others like we really like the planet dog snoop where they have to roll it and then it comes out mm-hmm. um kong where you have to bat it around and, and it also comes out and uh, but then there's other more challenging ones. You know, some of them have drawers and locking mechanisms. So the dogs actually have to learn how to unlock them and pull at the drawers. Uh, and they have different levels of difficulty. So you can kind of, you know, tier what kind of puzzles is appropriate for your dog. I mean, I personally, I have a bunch of puzzles at my house for my dog because even after going to the beach and hanging out at the facility all day he's home and he still um you know has energy for some reason i always say like you're 12 <laughs> take a nap you're okay uh, it's like your old dog take a nap uh, but yeah i have to pull out the puzzles and that's how i feed him at dinner so i always tell people don't think of it as like an additional expense think of it as a fancy bowl you know make them work for their dinner instead of them eating their dinner in three seconds they mm-hmm. could spend 15 minutes you know eating their dinner instead trying to work out how to get to their food and i feel like that's just a better use of their time there's a statistic that says that 15 minutes of mental stimulation is the equivalent of a three mile walk and wow. uh, if you kind of it's a little, it's kind of a crazy statistic but it's thrown out oh. there a lot and and i believe that because even like think about yourself like if you're doing a lot of work maybe it's desk work or something um, and you're having to think through a lot of things, you're tired, you're hungry. It's exhausting sometimes using mm-hmm. your brain. And for dogs, it's no different. So it's just finding ways to make make them busy. And there's games you can play too at home. Um, you know, if you learn, if your dog learns how to find hidden trees, you can literally hide things around your house. Um, there's just so many different different ways to engage your dog at your house. And if you have a dog that's ripping through your trash, um, tearing up furniture, it, these are all ways to keep themselves busy. You know, they're they're bored. You know, and a lot of times people will be like, "Well, my dog has anxiety," or, or maybe my dog needs Prozac. And I don't know if your dog needs Prozac. You know, if I was home alone eight hours a day every day the sight of you leaving that house would also make me anxious because Mm. I don't want to be home alone for eight hours a day. Can you imagine the anticipation? Like, oh my gosh, I have to endure eight hours of nothing. I would go mad. I would go mad. Yeah, I think that's so so insightful. And I think so many pet parents don't think of it that way. Yeah, because we're just like, oh, you know, okay, like we'll look at Hunter. I have a 10-year-old 12-pound Pomeranian Chihuahua. Like he's tiny. 
I'm like, oh, he's fine, you know, but no, he's not. And, and he's a dog that like when he was younger, if we didn't stimulate him enough, would eat my books and whatever book I was reading, like he would burrow a hole in it. You know, I took it very personal, <laughs> but that was before I knew anything about dog training. Um, and so what I'm really hearing and, and kind of what I want to touch on with you next is like the fact that like your dog's mental health should be a part of your budget when you're looking at getting a dog. And I don't know that people are looking at that. And so when we are looking at getting a dog, there's a financial burden that comes with that beyond just like, oh, they need food and water and a roof over their head. You know, what do you think that a pet parent should include when they're budgeting for a pet? And will that determine what kind of dog they get? It sh- I think it should, but um, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think that's a great way to frame that, Sylvia, because I do think it, in general, people do have a budget set in their mind about what they're willing to spend, you know, on their pet and, you know, mental stimulation, toys and activities and things like that seems to just be something that they just never considered and is not not in that 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 total total number that they have in their head. Um, I think that that varies. I mean, look, uh, these puzzles are like, what, $15, $20. It's not a crazy amount of money, it's like three coffees, you know, if you want to go buy like Starbucks, you know, currency. Uh, so I don't think it's that much to do some small things like each each month. If you do have like a dog that needs a lot more, you know, we're seeing a lot of shepherds, um, a lot of um, uh, what are some of the other dogs like Rhodesian Ridgebacks and um, Huskies right now are very popular. And those types of dogs, I would just keep to say, you know, hopefully you have a lot of time or you have a lot of money because those dogs need a lot of time or they need a lot of, a lot of, a lot of enrichment that you're going to have to pay for. <laughs> so I do think it, it does matter what kind of dog you're going to get. You know, you want a, you know, sofa lounging dog, you know, they still need enrichment, but you could probably say like half day of daycare, a couple times a week and maybe a couple hikes and that dog's fine. They could be dropped off at home and they're going to sleep soundly on the sofa until you get back from work. Um, but you have a husky, that dog needs to be doing something all day. And that's, every day. that's a lot. That's a lot. So <laughs> every day, every day, there's no, there's no, no breaks for dogs like that. So yeah, I do think people need to consider it in their budget. And it really does matter on the breed though. Like a husky is going to cost a lot more money um, or, or a lot more time. You know, if you mm. have the time, that's amazing. That They're even happier if you can do it with them versus somebody else. Um, but most of us don't right now, especially if we live in the city. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's one of the things that I'm like, it's it's so easy, I think sometimes for us to get caught up in, um, I, I don't want to, not necessarily blanket statements, but um, I've noticed it just over the last six months that like I almost um, project my situation living here in Reno, Nevada, and I've got a bunch of space into what other people must be going through. And I would imagine it gets sent the other way. Somebody else that's staying in a small apartment and giving advice back to somebody who's in this big area. And it's it sounds similar even like with what we're talking on um, daycares and enrichment and mental issues with our dogs and all of these things to get them active. Because what it would take to um, properly care for a husky in an apartment in New York City is completely different than what it would take to care for a husky here in Reno, Nevada with the mountains in our backyard. If that's absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, just yeah. talking uh, about uh, absolutely. difference in size mm-hmm. and space accommodations, mm-hmm. I think a common misconception too for pet parents and Andrea, I'm sure you've had to deal with this argument so much in your career is like, just because you have a backyard that your dog is running around in doesn't mean that that's the sufficient like that doesn't mean that oh I don't have to walk my dog today because they ran around in the backyard all day like if I I mean I run around my apartment all day I know exactly what every nook and cranny and every, every corner of my apartment is I'm not discovering anything new and as a dog who constantly needs discovery and to be you know stimulating their sensory um, senses running around in your backyard I mean does that count every day day in day out so can i can i ask the, no the both and of it you, also maybe, makes them very insular too can mm. i ask can, uh, can i ask you guys maybe a, a taboo question and we might need to finish answering it when we get back 
But um, one of the things that I see the value in in the human animal bond is what we're getting from being together. Do you see a scenario where it's like, okay, I am a, I'm a single person. Mm-hmm. I don't really have a lot of friends. My family doesn't live near me. Maybe I don't even have any family. I want to bring a dog into my life so that I ha- that that I have that emotional connection and support, and I'm not going crazy. But I can't take my dog out every single day. And walking down the streets when I get home at night after work, maybe that's not always the best idea. It's one thing to just kind of get out and do the breath. Like, does that exist or does that not exist? Is that a, or is that just too hard of a question to answer? Andrea, do you want to take? I a mean, you're be asking about like, yeah. I mean, you're asking. Or should I get a cat? There, uh, <laughs> Yes. So yeah, yeah. No, I think, yeah, you want a companion and you can definitely have a dog as a companion for sure. I think it really, you just have to pick the right, the right breed or mix of breeds. If you're getting, you know, uh, adopting a dog, uh, that's gonna, you know, be compatible with your schedule and everything. I think people don't really think it through too much. Sometimes they, it's by looks like what the dog looks like. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you can, you can get a dog that's a good companion for you, um, that doesn't need as much for sure and i think it's just the finding out finding that that perfect mix and um and then i think there's a lot of breeds out there that are good apartment dogs i'll just chime in here just to play devil's advocate jason and say you know i love my husband we've been together for 10 years but i do enjoy getting out and seeing other people who aren't my husband you know (laughs) i think you know we're i think we're all married here right now on this podcast it's like i think we can all relate <laughs> it's like as much as your dog is going to be your companion and your best friend and like that human animal bond mm-hmm. is so important. I think that a, a huge important part of your relationship with your dog is allowing them the space and the dignity to be their own personality and have their own likes and dislikes and consent to things that they would enjoy doing outside of your relationship. Sure. Just like, yeah, you and your dog are going to go everywhere together, but there's going to be a night that you go, if you are single, that you go on a date and you're not going to bring your dog on your date. Yep. And like, why doesn't your dog have a date, you know? So yeah, I guess because and, and I'm, I always find it um, very admirable when I talk to somebody, they're like, I don't have a dog because I don't have time for one. Right mm. now. Um, and, and, and I completely understand that, like, I don't have the space, I don't have the time. So as much as I want to bring that into my life, I'm choosing right now not to. On the flip side of that, I've seen some people where that's kind of showing up as a roadblock when they could bring a rescue into their life where they do have the time, but but they've almost overcorrected, if that makes sense. Mm. And so now now there's, they're, they're, they're like I see them like, oh, you're missing this magic in your life. You're missing that that happy face when you come home to and and that personality. And I'm hearing like a lot of this stuff and I, and I love it. Like I really love that we should be investing more into our relationships with our animals and all that stuff. But I also want to make like, like, are we overcorrecting and telling people like, oh, unless you have six hours a day to give to your dog, you should shouldn't be getting an animal. And that's, and I guess like if it's a Husky, maybe that is the right thing to say, but maybe if it's another breed that, that they're just happy getting to spend that time with you for a couple hours a day and it's more chill, that's okay too. Yeah. And I think like to Andrea's point, you know, that's what she's talking about when like, when you're, you know, when you're looking to get a dog, if you want to go down that road, like be responsible. And like, if you, if you know that like, okay, when I got my first dog, I was like 21 and I worked in an office and I knew that I didn't have a whole lot of time for a dog. And so I got a dog who was like a total couch potato snoozy puppy that required minimal walks. You know, we would run together in the mornings, but that was like enough for her to just be totally conked out. And then I noticed she needed companionship. So I would like take her to the dog park on weekends or take her down to my parents' house and I'd leave her with my mom maybe for a few days and then pick her back up. So I think there's a lot to be said about, yeah, you want this to be your companion and like, no, everyone deserves to have the love of the dog. And I think that's where services like what Andrea is offering with, you know, daycare and fit dog. That's where like, absolutely you can. And absolutely anybody can have time because here's how you create time. And here's how you create a healthy balance 
for your dog so that if you don't have it in you to do it or you're a busy person, your dog doesn't have to be lonely without you. And still, you know, you can have a dog and and it can be fair if you have a specific breed that you have to have. Just be aware of what you're going to need to provide for that specific breed. And if you're just like, I want any dog. Well, then now you can shop for your lifestyle. And I think right there, we'll take a break. Yeah. Love. I spend a lot of time in the backyard and I'm the center of attention at summer barbecues. In 96, I made some of the tastiest s'mores. And at 09, it was me, your backyard fire pit, that accidentally started a wildfire when a summer breeze carried one of my embers into some dry brush. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. My name is Lola Silvestri, and I'm going to be 95 this year. I was very independent. I fell, and I had to have meals on wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. (laughs) Hey, everyone. Let's all stop what we're doing and take a moment. You see? Every moment can be kind of special. But they can be loud moments, goofy moments, dorky moments. It doesn't matter. Because every time dads like us take a moment like that to spend with our kids, well, it's pretty momentous. So let's take a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to start foraging wild berries. I was skeptical, but these are actually pretty good. You don't need to sell your soul to the devil. Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. You just need FeedThePig.org. Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at FeedThePig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke, but this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign up. I'll get right on it as soon as I'm done with this baby panda video. (laughs) Text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media, the future of broadcasting. Explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. All right. Okay, I'm just hogging all the questions today. You guys work together, though, right? So you guys get to talk all the time. So I'm like, all the time I'm we just excited out. to be a part of the, the crew for a little bit. <laughs> So um, <laughs> the other thing that you mentioned earlier was uh, like you had some um, people that would come through and say, I didn't even recognize that my dog was depressed. And now I have like this totally different dog and, and I'm addicted to their happiness and all of these things. Like, um, can you think of any stories in particular that really stand out to you of like, you know, this dog came in and was like this originally. And after doing these kind of things, these were the changes in their lives. Yeah, there's, there's actually a lot of them. So um, I don't know if my the customers want me to use their dog's names, but we had one dog. Uh, she's a mix and probably like a hound, shepherd, something like a full mutt. Um, but really active. And she had been in daycare with us for maybe like three years. And he kept telling the owner like, hey, uh, this dog can't be in daycare. It's, she's not happy here. And the owner's like, no, she's fine. She's fine. And finally, we're like, well, just go. We're, we'll pay for it. We'll just pay for the hike. We'll, we'll cover it for you. Just Can we just take her out for a hike? And uh, she let us. And then we did and she was floored and then we took her again and we took her again and 
Um, that dog has not been back to daycare since then. It's been like two and a half years. She's not meant for daycare and she's a hundred percent happier. And she also does some of our afternoon classes. And then we have like another dog who, okay. Well, hold on. He's but, like so, a, but what does that mean? Yeah. So like when you say not meant for daycare and a hundred percent happier, like what are those indicators? Like what, like what were the changes that she noticed in her, in her fur kid that really stood out that she was like, you were a hundred percent right. So one is the picture. So one of the things that at Fit Dog we really value is transparency and also making sure that people know what they're getting, what they're paying for. Um, you know, the dog's experience, making having this experience and the owner's not, but the owner is paying for it. So a lot of what we do is we share a lot of photographs and videos of what the dog's doing during the day. And when we started sharing pictures of her and videos of her and how she was behaving out on the trail, uh, it was just behavior that the owner hadn't seen. Like she was like frolicking. She was looked like she was smiling. She just looked like she was just taking in everything. You could see her in her eyes, just her spirit. It was completely different. And, uh, you know, the owner said like, you know, I saw the pictures and it almost made me want to cry because I'd ne I've never seen her look like that. So, you know, you're, but, you know, in her mind before, she was fine. Everything was fine. You know, she didn't seem like anything was wrong. But when you take it to the next level, you know, you can just feel that the, the dog is experiencing something and there's real pure joy and just having these other experiences. And in her case, her dog needed to be having high intensity exercise five days a week. And she still does. She's still with us. Um, but I have another uh, very similar story where this person has been a customer since 2012 dog's been in daycare and he's not he's not super high energy but he's like part shepherd and you know he, he can do more stuff you know so we kept saying like maybe you want to try once in a while and finally she gave in and she's like fine can he can he go to the beach with you guys and we said sure so he brought him to the beach and the same experience where the owner was like he looks like he's having the best time of his life like i just I never even thought about bringing him to the beach. Like she was in shock. And so he goes once a week, you know, he doesn't need it every day. He, he is fine in daycare. Like he does like his daycare friends, but it's something added where he gets to really look forward to something. And he knows the day of the week that he goes, like she says to us, he knows today is the day that he gets to go to the beach and he's ne he will never let me miss it. So it's just really just seeing that transformation of their spirit and just seeing them enjoy life. And, you know, in Los Angeles, you know, like you said, it, the experiences are different from city to city. And, you know, being in a city like Los Angeles or New York, you know, this isn't everybody's experience. This is like a, a small percentage of people's experience. It, but being here, getting dogs out into nature is really important. And it's important for humans. It's supposed to make us happier, too. So I feel like getting them out more is really beneficial for them um, in a lot of ways. So if you don't have outdoor space, you don't have mountains, just finding some way to get them outside is going to improve their overall happiness. And then before we run out of time, I wanted to just bring up with you, um, you know, like hearing these stories, obviously it's so powerful and, and your business model for daycare is, is just different, you know, like you're just doing different stuff. So for the pet owner out there, who's like on the fence and, you know, obviously our world has totally changed now. So traveling is not really normal, you know, but I used to be a pet sitter, as you know, like here in my house, like what, what do you say? Like, what's the biggest difference between like go doing daycare or like doing going through a pet sitter like what are the benefits and and kind of detriments to both or either yeah so I, I think it's something that people struggle with uh, when you're in like a, a daycare environment and you know you have boarding people feel immense guilt leaving their dog and because it, it seems like it's just this big facility and all these different people and maybe their dog isn't getting one-to-one -one care that's the that's the the, um, impression people get, you know, it's like, and then, oh, but if I leave my dog with a pet sitter, they're going to get one-to-one -one care and I can ensure that. So there are some myths around this. And one of them is, is that when you have a pet sitter, it really depends on the, what you're getting with the pet sitter. And there's no guarantee it's, it's a person mm. and you don't have the fallback of a reputable company, especially if you pick somebody that really doesn't know what they're doing or, isn't really following through with, you know, your request, you know, like, 
And if you have somebody like the, the ones I really don't like is the ones that go to people's houses when they're traveling. So the dog is at home alone and the pet sitter drops in like two times a day. That to me in any scenario is not a good scenario. That means your dog's home alone all day, feels abandoned in their house. It doesn't matter how awesome the pet sitter is. They're not getting any kind of exercise, enrichment, engagement, socialization. Nothing's happening for them all day. And then they get this walk and, you know, maybe some cuddle time and that's it. So to me, that that's probably a huge disadvantage of, in that particular scenario. But if you have, you know, a dog staying with a person, again, it's really like the standards. Um, you don't know what you're getting. You have to properly vet pet sitters. Um, a lot of times, you know, anybody can say that they're a pet sitter, like Sylvia, you pet sit dogs, but guess what? You're a trainer, you know what you're doing. Um, and that's great. And so, you know, would I leave Brecken with you? Yeah, I would leave Brecken with you. But a lot of times you just don't know. You don't have that transparency when you're mm. dealing with pet sitters. And if you don't want to go through that vetting process, it probably isn't the right process. It probably isn't the right choice for you. Um, Because I do think it requires a lot more vetting. On the other side, you have daycares. And again, there are different different standards of daycare too, um, just like hotels. You know, you get what you pay for sometimes. And, uh, but you do get to fall back like on a company. Um, you do know what their policies are. And I would tell people that, you know, we care about our dogs. Like they get a lot of attention from us all day long. Um, and we don't, just because there's a lot of them doesn't mean that we don't care for each one, every single one of them. And we know exactly who's there um, and they're cared for and they're loved and they get lots of cuddles. And my staff has thousands of photos of like every dog that's in there. So I would say that that's a big myth that your dog might not get the full attention. I feel like they get more attention because there's more staff and, and more, more cuddles to go around. So I would just say, you know, be careful what you're choosing. There's some due diligence that has to happen. And um, and making sure that you know your dog is getting the exercise enrichment during the day when you're gone, you know, versus like you know what are they going to get when they're with the pet sitter versus you know at a facility that has a lot of options for them. Love that. Yeah, that was a good. That was an awesome breakdown. I've that always... was a really good answer. I'm like, oh, so many, so much to think about. <laughs> That's always been one of the toughest things for us is how to deal with. Uh, and my dad's sold his his daycare and, and his boarding since um, the end of last year. But um, th- that was always one of the most difficult things for us to decide was what are we going to do with our dogs when we would go on longer trips, like when especially when we do like wedding photography, which we don't do anymore, um, and just those longer vacations to keep them the happiest. And trying to think through all of that, we knew that sending them to the vet was not going to be what made them the most happy. Hmm. Um, and we ran into issues too like when my dad did own the doggy daycare he said that they would get burnt out from being at the doggy daycare and would want to know like to feel some kind of sense of home again so then it, like I was fortunate enough that he would bring them home and he would take them to doggy daycare when he was at work and then they'd get to come home and then stay over at his house but I mean it wasn't just a simple just do this and and make it happen because one of our like it was really stressful for Maximus in particular if we weren't there overnight so now we have somebody that comes and actually stays at the house watches the house hangs with the dogs and and tries to give them as much normalcy as possible yeah and, and I think dogs definitely have different reactions to boarding um like like one person, which I found very humorous, they came in and they were, and the dog runs in through the door and they said to me, uh, yeah, I was packing my bag last night and now my dog woke me up in the morning because he knew he was coming here. He's like so happy, <laughs> like he hates yep. being with me and he wants to be here. <laughs> Like, right. was like really and she's like she's like it's ridiculous like he knew i was leaving and he was like yeah i'm going to fit dog see ya that's I'm great. Like, okay well that's awesome uh, so, uh, but then you have other dogs are really anxious and they just want to be with their their mom or dad at the house and stuff um and some of those dogs like my staff wears dogs like we have dogs that like live in our sweatshirts um <laughs> and so i think like it really you know it really depends, you know what they they need and their whole their and we'll we're willing to do uh, whatever to make the the dogs you know comfortable and plus you know because we we want to be transparent like we don't want dogs coming in that aren't happy either so you know if a dog is not having a good time 
or is really stressed out from a boarding experience, we're going to tell the owners, you know, this was, this was tough for your dog. And we would recommend, you know, if you have a close friend, somebody who knows your dog to stay with your dog, that's probably a better option for you. And I have made that recommendation before for certain dogs, because it's important that your dog gets what they need. It's all about their individual personality. You know, everyone always says, my dog's like a human. And then we say that, but then yet somehow we set, we don't really attribute like all of the human characteristics to them, but we should. They deserve all of them and they need to have an individualized life just like any one of us. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So, so good. Well, Andrea, thank you so much for popping on with us today. This was enlightening, educational, and I think you gave our listeners a lot to think about when they're planning their next trip. And um, I think the biggest thing I picked up from like what you've been saying is like, you know, go with your gut and go with your dog and take time to vet out the right situation for them mm -hmm. because it matters because they matter. Okay. I want to take a quick second to thank both Andrea and you, Sylvia, for hanging out with me again today and putting on a great show. I learned an absolute ton, but like, I think we've only done it one other time before we forgot to sneak on our dog dad joke. You forgot to I, tell your joke. Okay. I mean, it's, we're a team here. We're All right. We forgot, it. <laughs> but I'm ready. I'll field, I'll okay. field your dog okay. dad joke. Are you, are you, let's, let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm comfortable. Okay. I've got it. You've got ready. Yep. Uh, no, 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 not that one. Not that one. Oh, no. Where, where is it? Um, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I'm ready. Are you ready? I... <laughs> oh, no. He's laughing already. I'm nervous. Okay. What kind of dog loves to take bubble baths? A shampoodle. <laughs> no. Some of these are... Some are, are better than the others, but I try to, I, I give it all my heart. I give it all my heart. I love how enthusiastic you are. Like when you read it yourself, you think it's so funny. Oh, well, yeah. Like, I love that. It's just, it's so good. I do Hashtag like dog dad jokes. Yep. All right. Okay. So, so yeah. So anything, uh, now, now that we've gotten through that, I want everybody to know anything that we talked about, like maybe some of the, the products, the puzzles and stuff, we will make sure to put those in the show description, uh, down below. Speaking of, make sure that you subscribe, uh, we're on all the major podcast channels, but pick your favorite, click on the subscribe button, uh, and show us some love. Uh, and then make sure to check out everybody on social media. So we've got dog up in this bitch, uh, forever USA. And then we have fit dog, um, as well. So make sure to go over and check them out. Um, and lastly, if there is a topic personality or a, uh, a, just like a product that you want to know more about, you want to share, reach out to us, let us know. We love talking about what you guys want to hear about. So until next time, uh, hugs to everybody, and I will see you guys. Air, soon. air, air, far away, COVID friendly hugs. I know. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.